welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I've done a Photoshop video, so I figured I would bring you along um, today. I am working on creating some different kinds of stamps, and these are actually images that I did in um, Canva. You know, I've told you guys that I use Canva and Photoshop together as well as Adobe Illustrator. Um, but what I've done was in Canva, I've done the, um, the elements, um, where you go to elements and you can, they have the different, um, let me go to all of them. It's the frames and they have the images that are, look like a stamp or whatever. And so then the only thing that I done was just, um, drop some, like coffee dyed paper looking stuff into them. Um, so this is how you get those stamped images. Then I just exported that as a PNG with a transparent background so that my um, stamp images are all individual. And I'll show you why. This is something that I just figured out how to do on the um, Photoshop and on iPad. And it's a game changer for me. Um, and I'll show you some more using this in a little bit, but right now, we're, what we're going to do is I'm gonna show you how I'm making, um, I actually made a set of stamps today already. These are the stamps I made, and I started off exactly um, like the other page that um, we're gonna be working on. So, this is what I've done. Um, I already have my background color. I just done it to one of the colors on here um, where I done the um, eyedropper tool and just picked a color that I liked and that's what I done. Um, so let me show you how to do this. So on your iPad, you'll notice down here, you have these three little dots. If you click on that, it, you come up with a different menu. And what you wanna do is you want to do load as selection. And I don't know if it's showing up. Let me see if you can see it. Okay, see how um, all of the little um, edges around my um, images are moving? Because that's my selection. So I'm not gonna do anything quite yet with that selection. What I wanna do now is while it's still doing that, I want to put on a new <laughs> pencil tip real quick. I'm sorry, my I have worn through so many pencil nibs, it's not even funny. And I am awful, and I hate when they start getting worn out, they like start catching. So I apologize, I should have already done that, but I just thought about it. Okay. Back in business. Okay, so we've done the three dots. We've done load of selection. Now what I want to do is I want to hit the plus sign right here. Hopefully you guys can see what, what I'm showing you. When I hit that, now I'm going to do new layer. Now I'm still leaving all of this, and I'm going over here to my paint, my, uh, paint bucket tool, and I'm going to hit it. Now watch this. I'm gonna hit the um, inside of that and do you see how it went just onto my selection? So now I wanna deselect. All right, now I really don't need the image underneath. Um, I use that just simply for, um, to get the, um, the frame um, that I needed or wanted. So what I have done, I don't know if you can see, I have actually hidden that um, underlayer right there. So it's now hidden, you cannot see it. So I could actually even delete it if I wanted to. Um, so now what we can do is we can start adding stuff onto these images. And because it's one layer of several different images, we have to be a little bit, uh, not cautious, but a little bit more, um, detailed in how we do this. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to go to my files and I'm going to where I have, let me see. I've already done English roses, but we may still do some more of that. Well, here's wildflowers. Okay, so let's do, let's do some wildflowers maybe. 
those really don't have transparent backgrounds though. Let me get some um, wildflowers that have some transparent background. Um, just so that I can show you guys. Let me do botanical. Okay, so let me just start saving some of these. I've got so many roses. I don't need to do any more roses. I need to just do something that's not roses. Um, okay, so I'm just going to start downloading some of these just so that I can show you a few. Um, and we'll just do a few of these. And then um, I'll show you um, the other thing that I figured out that I can do. Um using that uh, load as selection tool and it's pretty cool or at least I think it is and I mean some of you guys may have even already known about it and it may not be new to you but it was one of them things that I didn't know about and it was like oh yes okay let me see and go back over here let me get some more and I hear an avalanche of stuff coming behind me. I think it's my garbage bag. Um, see, it's all roses, pretty much, which is fine with me. Yep, ah, I caught it. <laughs> Y'all should have seen that move. Woo! Okay. I just want to get a couple more images just so that we have enough that you can see what I'm actually doing. I'm wondering if, let me go to raw pixel. That might be better to try and get those images. Just because I'm in a hurry. So I'm going to click PNG. Um, we can do this one. And I have a lot of these images already on my um, my little thumb drive here, but my iPad is nearly dead, so I need it plugged in, and my um, base that I can use is in the other room, and I'm just flat being lazy. So this is what we're doing, because I'm being too lazy to get up and go get it. All right, let's get just a couple more. And this is all stuff that I've showed you guys how to do, how I get my images and stuff. So um, hopefully this part right here is not boring the life out of you. Um, we'll go ahead and get that one, even though it's got several, because maybe we can somehow figure out how to use them all at one time. If not, there's always the erase tool. All right, I'm going to get this one, and I think that's going to be it for now. Okay, so now back to Photoshop. Now let's go to our downloads and let's pull those images that we just saved. And let's see. Okay, here's one. And now I wanna put it on top of that image. So if you remember on how to select the layers and move them, so I have it on top. I want to be able to select it. And so I'm going to put it over this one right here. Let me see if I can get you guys down just a little bit because I really want you to be able to see what I'm doing. Hopefully that will help you guys. Okay. So I've got it over that image right there. Um, now, that's about where I want it, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it. There's a tiny, tiny bit touching right here. So I'm just gonna erase that little bit because I really don't need it touching. And remember, because I'm working in that layer, I'm not erasing anything else. Now, if you remember, I think it was last week or week before last, I talked to you about how you do the clipping mask on the iPad. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna go right over here to the sidebar and did you see how I done? I hit the box with the arrow down, and I just undone it so that you can see. Um, it has a box with an arrow down, and when I clip it, 
you see what it does. It automatically goes right, it clips all around that. So this is the base for our stamps. Now, if I had left that little piece hanging over there, it would have went on that as well, which in some some instances, that's perfectly fine. I know when I was doing the um, stamps today, I did leave some where it was on a couple of different images. Um, so you can absolutely do that. It's not a problem. Now, with this, this is a perfect example here. This one has a white background. And so you would think I would not be able to use it without it showing up. But remember, I still have the exact color selected over here. So all I'm gonna do is hit my paint bucket and I'm gonna fill that in. And then I'm just gonna fill in the little area that still um, had the white. Now I'm just going to resize that to the size that I want it and figure out where I wanna put it. And we can put it right there. Again, I have it over that one image. I'm gonna hit done. And now, even though it's on top of that this layer, it's still going to go down to the next layer when I hit this, so just watch. And there we go. And see, you, you never know that it had a white background. So let's just do a couple of more just so that you can get the idea of how to do these. And again, it's just, and okay, let me do this while I'm up here so that that way we'll do some that's not so easy to do like this one. If I were to put this one, say right here, when you look at it, I've got, it's got some of the images on this one. So if I were to clip it down, you see how it would get the leaf right there, which is perfectly fine. I don't have a problem with that. But the other thing I can do is take my eraser and I can just erase, let me get it a little bit larger. And I can erase the area that's touching that right there. And so now when I clip it down, there's nothing touching it. And so that's all you have to do. Um, if you're putting something on there that's gonna touch or that you don't want it to touch. Now, um, I'm wondering if it's my actual screen that needs to be replaced, because this one's doing the same thing. Probably is. Now, let's see, I don't know how this one will look using both. Um, let me erase this right here, because that would be just greenery. Okay, let's see what it would look like. That would actually look okay, but I did leave some green right there. So you see, I used the one image and actually got two different um, stamps that I was able to do with it. Um, so that's what I was telling you. And let me see. Now I need to show you the next steps on how to do... Um, the images are how to do the stamps. Now, these are cute, but these don't look anything like a stamp. So that's where I come in and I have my, um, like my stamp images that I have saved as like a PNG to where they have the transparent background. Um, and I don't need all of that. So I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna make my eraser bigger. And I think I just want this image right there. So I'm going to erase everything else from around it. And I could crop it and all that kind of stuff, but it for me, it's honestly just as easy for me to do this and it doesn't take that much time for me to do it. And then I'll show you my cheat way of doing it too. And I mean, I could have left this and just added all of this onto the images and it would have been perfectly fine.
Okay, so now that I have that done, I do see a little spot. It was somewhere right in here. There it was. Okay. Now that I have that done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer a couple of times just so that I can have it. Now I'm going to go back down here to the layer that's directly above that pink, that last flower. I'm going to select it and I'm going to move it and I'm going to size it down. And then I'm going to take, let me see, I'm just going to turn it kind of like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use that make a clipping mask. And so then over here, I can take and do it like that. And again, if it's on this part of the stamp, I'm okay with it because it's not going to be that big of a deal. So I could clip it like that. Or um, if I really don't want that there, then I can just get my eraser tool and just get where it's not touching that next stamp. And there you have it. And then I'm going to get the next one that I have done. And let's do it like this. Okay, and then we have one more that I've already done. And we will do, say, this one here. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay. And so then the next thing that I need would need to do would be very similar. I need to get my um, numbers that I have done as APNG. And I can either do the number sign or, you know, but like a stamp, it's got like six cents or, you know, I can put it wherever. And so as you can see, now it's starting to look more like a stamp. And then... The other thing that you can do is, let me see. I do have it on mixed splatter. I'm gonna bring it down to about 11 and I'm gonna put it on, let's see what Color Burn does. And then we'll see about going just around the, let me choose that layer, the layer that is my stamps. And let me see what it does if I go just around the edge of the stamp there, it should, let's go to darker color. I think that's what we're gonna want. And it's not wanting to, because it's gonna take some time, but you can see that it's starting to darken that edge up. Where I can make the stamp look a little more vintage. I'm getting out of the lines because I don't color so well. Let's see. Let's go a little darker on it. Because I want to try and make it look like it's a worn stamp. And you can see where it's doing it, but it's because I've got my pencil set so light or small, but I don't want to be doing a lot. But as you can see, it is starting to darken up. And I could do my pencil a little bit bigger and it would probably go faster, but the thing is, when you get off of that color, you see how it's given that brown color, and I really don't want that, so I'm going to erase that. And let's try my... <laughs> Wasn't that good. Let's try the color burn again. I think that's the one that I really like. No, I may be linear burn. I may be being stupid. I don't like that. I am not liking that at all. I don't like the way it's looking. So I'm just hitting the back button until I can get 
all of that off. And I see a little bit. Okay, that's all that it's going to let me do. Let's go up here to this one and let's see. See, that's what it's supposed to do. You know why it's not doing it? I bet because it's not merged down. Let's try something, guys. Okay. I told y'all I'm learning with you. Let's try to go in. Let me select this color. Let me get this smaller again. Let's try and see it works if we do it before we layer it. So that may be what I want to do is go before I put the um, clipping mask on. I don't know. We're going to see. Because see, that's technically how this should do. Well, that one's doing it. I don't know why the other one's not doing it. I don't know. I may have something set crazy on that one. But yeah, this is how I want it to do. I just want it to go and kind of make the edge look a little worn. And I could do um, I could do a different brush and make it look a little better, I think. Um, and see now the brush is looking blue because I'm going over the blue. Um, you know, it might look better if I done like the watercolor brush. I don't know. But you get the idea that, you know, this is what you need to do. And so I'm just kind of going around it a little bit more just to... And then you can, I think you can go right in here. Yeah, okay. So that's how we can play around with it to really make them look vintage. Um, so that's the one thing that I was working on. That was super fun and super cool. But let me show you the other thing I was working on. Um, I uploaded these stamps uh, today, I believe. But if you look at the pages, look how they all look like they're stacked on top of each other. How cool is that? Let me show you how to do it. So we will start. Oh, I just had to show you my stance again. We're going to start with a clean slate again. I'm going to go ahead and color it in just so that we have that. Now, let's get a photo and let's stack some photo. That is not what I want to do. Let's stack some photos. Let's do, I mean, I guess we can do the stamps again. Okay, let's do the stamps. Uh, those have the transparent background, so I don't really want to do those. Um, let's do these. Oh, my goodness. My Photoshop is going crazy. Okay, let me select it. Well, it's not, did y'all see that? Okay, so I'm selecting it. I'm gonna get it down to the size that I want, which is good. Okay, now remember what we done when we were working with the stamps and we done the three little dots? We're gonna click that. We're going to load a selection. We're going to create, we're going to do a new layer. Then I'm going to come over here to the color and I want it more of a black or a gray because it's going to be a shadow. So then I take and it's still on the fill and then I cover it. Then I hit deselect. Now, here's where the fun part comes in. You see the little square with the lightning bolt? You hit that, and then you hit the Gaussian Blur, and I have mine at 48.2%, and you can go up or down, depends on how blurry it is and how I like mine about 
the 40-ish, somewhere along in there. Okay, so right now you can't see anything, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to take that image and put it over on top of that, and then I'm just going to merge it down. So now, look, I have this shadowed piece of paper, it looks like. And so if I bring another, um, uh, what was that? Let's bring maybe this on. So I could take this, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna load a selection. I'm gonna do new layer. I'm gonna go over here, it's still on that gray. Select the paint bucket, fill it in. Deselect, I didn't tell y'all to do that. You have to hit the deselect. I'm gonna go back to my Gaussian blur, blur it, hit done. Then I'm gonna bring the labels on top of that gray. And then I'm gonna merge it down, select it, and then I can move it. And so now you see how it's given it dimension and it looks like it's stacked on top of each other. So that was the neat thing that I learned. It may not be that big of a deal, but there's more that you can do with that. And let me show you what you can do. Okay, let me just delete that layer. Let me pull a photo. Um, let's pull this one because it has no background. So let's get it where you can see it. Okay. So now let's do the same thing. Let's load a selection. Let's create a new layer. But instead of the gray, because we already have so much gray, let's go with like a blue. Okay. And then we're going to select the um, paint bucket and then we're going to fill it in. Then we're gonna hit deselect. Now, I can do the Gaussian blur, and there it looks like it's shadowed. Or I can take and I can bring the black on top of it so it looks like the shadow is coming out from underneath it. Or I can not hit the Gaussian blur. I can select that, let me put the black on top of the blue, well, yeah, let's put the black on top of the blue. Okay. Now, let's select the blue layer. And look. Did y'all see what I just done? I moved, I moved it. Well, actually, I moved the black layer over because I had it selected. So now, it looks like there is a shadow behind all of my um, stuff. And there we go. So, I can, I'm going to show you again. And I could... Do the shadow up or down or this way or this way. So you see, there's so much you can do with using that. And then if we done the Gaussian blur, we can take it down some because that was quite a bit. And then we could, let's see. Now let's get back with the blue on the bottom. But now we could take, say, the blue, and see I'm moving the blue a little bit. So now it looks like I have a shadow. And there you go. That's all you have to do. And it was so much fun. And so you can do that in so many different things um, that you're creating. Um, you know, like, oh trying to think of some of the other stuff that um, you can do it on. Um, let's see. Let's take a look and let's just see what we can do it on maybe. I don't know. I'm just having fun with it. Um, okay, let's do a library card. Oh. See, there goes my, my Photoshop goes crazy again. So this is another way that you can use that um, load selection. Let's
let's see. Let's get a library card. Okay, so we have a library card. Let's put it over here. Let's load it as the selection. Let's create a new layer. Now we still have it on fill. We still have this blue color. Let's go to a different color, like something like that. And then hit it. Then we're gonna deselect. And we can either layer it down. Um, that just makes it easy to do the layering to where you're not having to color or use it. That's one very quick and easy way to color um, the way that you want it to be colored. Or we can use it for um, to make shadow. And how we do the shadow is we're going to bring the library card on top. And then you can see we have some shadowing because I didn't do that much of a blur. Or we can even bring it out and move it just a little bit to where it really has some shadow behind it. So those are just some of the different things that you can do. Let me do the um let me do the one where we just colored the library card. So load a selection, new layer. It's already done. Hit it, deselect. And then I'm going to do um, the clipping mask, and then I'm going to do it as multiply. So now we have a green colored library card. Or if I wanted to do, um, let's see, let's do this. Let's go load a selection. We're going to create a new layer. We're going to go over here and let's make it a lighter color. We're going to do that. We're going to deselect. We're going to make it clip. Then we are going to multiply, and there we go. So you see how quick and easy um, this was. Um, very simple to do color changes, shadows, um, anything like that. Your stamps, um, it, it made it very easy for me to do the stamps. Um, it is not it's something that it, it's one of those things unless you do it you don't you know you might not understand it and so that's why whenever I seen it today I'm like oh my goodness really you know I couldn't believe that I didn't I don't know that I was doing things the crazy hard way because I didn't know how to do it and so I'm just trying to get it on top right now okay and let me go ahead and duplicate this layer because we're just going to make a couple of library cards into different colors very quickly. Just so that, you know, I can show you how quick and easy it is. Okay, there we go. So we're going to go back down to this one. We're going to do the Lotus selection. We're going to hit new layer. We're going to come over here. Let's pick a color. Let's do a purple. We're going to hit our paint bucket. We're going to that was not the right thing. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now we're gonna deselect. And we're gonna come over here. We've done that. We're gonna do it down to multiply. This is part of the, um, when I was teaching you how to do the clipping mask the other day. Um, so let's do the next one. We're gonna highlight it. We're gonna do load a selection, new layer. Let's go over here and let's see, let's do it a blue. Deselect, we're gonna clip it down. Then we're gonna change the blend mode to multiply. Okay. So now let's see what else we want to do. We want to go to the next one, select it, do load a selection, add a new layer. We want to pick, let's pick maybe a red. We're going to color that. We're going to deselect. We're going to clip it down, change the blend mode to multiply. Last one, load a selection, new layer. Let's do... Um, 
a green. How about a green? And do that. We're going to do deselect. We are going to do it down and then load a select or clip it down and then multiply in the blend mode. And that's it, guys. So we have created several different colored library cards. We've added a library card with um, a shadow. We have done a word with a shadow. And we have started making postage stamps. And all in about 30 minutes. So you can't beat that. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for tonight. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.